this edition of Wine School, we're going to move on from what we call the old world, uh, which is uh, basically Europe. Uh, so Spain and Portugal, Austria, Germany, France, Italy, uh, these uh, old nations of wine. Uh, we're going to move on from there and go to what we call the new world. Uh, and the new world basically includes uh, uh, South America, uh, Australia, New Zealand, um, and also the United States. Today we're going to focus mostly on the United States because our restaurant list tends to focus more on the United States than the other parts of the New World. Uh, but you should be aware of a few very classic wine styles uh, from other parts of the New World like New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc, uh, uh, Shiraz from Australia, or say uh, Malbec from Mendoza, which is very popular. American wine sort of has a dual history, uh, depending on whether you're looking at the East Coast or the West Coast. Uh, East Coast wine uh, was sort of a, a tricky thing. When settlers first arrived there, they saw lots and lots of wild grapevines and thought that it would be great for making wine. But those grapes didn't seem to make wine that made a lot of sense to them. And when they tried to plant European grapes, uh, those grapes didn't seem to want to grow uh, for various reasons. This situation has been mostly corrected in, on the East Coast, uh, and they can do it now, um, but the wine areas are still developing. The West Coast developed along a totally different track, uh, with Spanish missionaries bringing grapes from Spain, planting them in what is now Southern California, then finding pretty favorable conditions, uh, and then basically wine moving up the coast from there. California is definitely still the uh, most developed wine area, uh, not only on the West Coast, but in America. Beyond that, uh, I would probably say Oregon would be second, and then Washington State uh, just behind that. Past Washington State, the next in line to, to sort it out would probably be Virginia. Um, and uh, Virginia is making uh, great strides in, in the last five, ten years. Uh, the wines are coming along very nicely. American wines are classified according to a system called American Viticultural Areas, or AVAs. These are mostly geographical boundaries. They don't really tell you what you can and can't plant. Uh, they do tell you a little bit about uh, uh, yields and, and basic rules about farming. Um, but uh, mostly it's a geographical designation. AVAs can be fairly large, like say California, but they get smaller within that, so you have sub-AVAs. So you might have California, within that you would have Sonoma County, which uh, we have here. And beyond that, you have a, a smaller AVA, which would be within that, the Sonoma Coast. And then further down you might have, say, Fort Ross Sea View, which is a very tiny little AVA in the northern part of the Sonoma Coast. I mean, California, when you boil down to it, it has everything. It's got beautiful beaches, uh, people who work out vegan restaurants, uh, and beautiful wine. What makes California wine so great? What's it got that I don't got? I'll pay money. I've got, I've got my checkbook. It's a traveler's checkbook, but it still applies. You can use it. Well, one reason is because, as I said, uh, this is sort of where uh, West Coast wine started. Uh, but at the same time, uh, the conditions are really, really good for growing grapes. The sun is abundant and at the same time there's a really nice cooling effect from the Pacific. Uh, so there are a number of valleys that end on the coast uh, and then there is a bigger valley in the center part of California. Uh, the warm air rises and it sucks cool air off the ocean uh, and these valleys draw cool air in and, uh, and bring nice temperate weather to the vineyards. There's a very important effect uh, and California depends heavy, heavily upon it. It creates some actually relatively cool climate areas uh, very close to the coast, uh, while the uh, ones more inland uh, are a little bit warmer and, and can produce maybe a little bit richer, um, more fruity kind of style wines. The two main areas of California to look at are the two bulk areas above its two biggest cities. Uh, so the area just above San Francisco, uh, which would include Sonoma County and Napa County, uh, are very important, uh, as well as Mendocino County further up. But uh, Napa and Sonoma are definitely the, the most important areas to look at first. Napa County itself is mostly associated with the Cabernet Sauvignon grape, uh, but there's a lot of other wine coming from there too. Some Chardonnays, some Pinot Noirs, a whole smattering of other more uh, unusual grapes. Sonoma County kind of depends on where you are. Uh, if you're closer to the coast and it's a little cooler, you're probably going to be growing Pinot Noir and Chardonnay. Uh, if you're a little further north and a little inland uh, where it's a little warmer, you might be growing Cabernet, you might be growing uh, other Bordeaux varieties, you might be growing Zinfandel. Uh, still further north in Mendocino County, we find a little cooler climate and uh, sort of a hilly alpine kind of uh, topography. So we find a lot of cool climate varieties like Pinot Noir and Chardonnay, some Syrah, uh, but we also have some uh, beautiful old vine Carignan 
uh, as well as uh, some more unusual grape varieties like Gewürztraminer. Just north of California's other major city, Los Angeles, we find Santa Barbara County. So it's about two hours north of LA and extending all the way up pretty much until we're getting close to San Francisco, we consider this area the Central Coast. And the Central Coast is generally known for slightly cooler climate style wines, so we do find a lot of Pinot Noir and Chardonnay. Uh, in the Santa Barbara County area, we also do find some Sauvignon Blanc a little further inland. Uh, we also find a, a fair bit of um, Rhone varieties in Santa Barbara County, like uh, Syrah and Grenache. In general, it kind of depends on where you are. Again, if you're further inland, it's a little warmer, you might plant Syrah. If you're further out toward the coast, uh, where it's cooler, uh, you might find more Pinot Noir and Chardonnay. In general, the California style uh, tends to be associated with fruitier wines, wines that uh, have a little bit richer kind of fruit, less uh, tart acidity like, the, say, the French style. Um, but this is changing a little bit. The sort of classic stereotype for California Chardonnay is that it's oaky and it's buttery and sort of fat. But this is changing a little bit. The style is leaning up. Uh, there's uh, higher acid showing in the wines due to a lot of younger producers who are, who are more interested in older world wines than big power wines of their uh, previous generation. So we're seeing kind of a, a, a little bit of varied texture these days in, in California wine. So we're seeing more kind of acidity in the wines. We're seeing them harvested at a little bit lower ripeness level um, so that they retain some more of the savory kind of components, uh, less kind of big rich fruit. Uh, and this is happening not just in California, uh, but also in other parts of the world like uh, in, in Australia and also in South Africa. Some of the other classic California wine styles uh, are obviously Napa Cabernet, uh, Cabernet Sauvignon. Uh, it tends to be fairly dark fruited, lots of lush blackberry fruits, pretty firm kind of tannins, dark flavored wine, often very full bodied uh, and often having a fair bit of oak showing. Uh, so these are sort of the classic uh, big full-bodied wines of the world uh, and sort of the, the, the standard pairing for a big juicy steak. The Pinot Noirs from California uh, tend to have lots of uh, lush cherry fruit, moderate acid and uh, a little bit of tannin um, and a little bit of oak. Uh, but again, this is like Chardonnay is kind of a range uh, happening uh, of, of styles. So sometimes being more crisp crunchy kind of styles from the northern part of the Sonoma Coast, uh, sometimes being a little bit more baked um, cherry pie styles uh, that can happen down, say, in Russian River Valley. So next, let's look at Oregon. Oregon is a relative newcomer to the wine scene in the world. The Willamette Valley is kind of the focus of Oregon wine, and Willamette didn't have really wine in, in it until really the 1960s, and uh, it didn't really come into its own until the 80s. Uh, so it's a relatively young area. Uh, that said, uh, they're a very collaborative bunch in Oregon and uh, they're working really hard to keep the wines developing and keep trying to sort themselves out and figure out what the style is. Pinot Noir from Willamette Valley is kind of the standard. Uh, it tends to be a, a somewhere between, say, California Pinot Noir and, say, uh, Red Burgundy in style, uh, having a little firmer tannin and more sort of mineral earth kind of expression than the California wines. Uh, but maybe not quite as much as the French ones. Uh, at the same time, they can be very good and very age-worthy. In addition to Pinot Noir, they also grow a lot of Pinot Gris, which uh, has a little bit of a range of style. It can be sort of lean and crisp and steely. Uh, it can also be a little richer and leasier. There's also a fair bit of Chardonnay uh, happening in, in the Willamette Valley and uh, um, some other more obscure grapes like Arnais and uh, Gruner Veltliner. Um, We'll see what happens uh, in the next couple hundred years. As I mentioned, Washington State is probably third in line for uh, greatest wine growing state in the Union. Uh, Washington State, like Oregon, is a relatively young wine growing area. Uh, they've been growing wine there for um, the better part of the century, but it didn't really develop until, we'll say, the 70s. Uh, and uh, they're still sort of trying to figure it out. Washington State has a pretty unusual dynamic as far as their climate goes. You might think of Seattle, it rain and, and clouds all the time, but this is not really what the rest of the state is like. Uh, that's only really the northwest corner. There's a range of mountains that blocks that part from the rest. And the rest is kind of dry and arid and can be quite hot. This is really where all the wine growing areas are. In the daytime, it's quite hot in the summer, and in the night, it cools down considerably. So you have swings from, say, 105 degrees in the day to say 50 degrees at night. And this creates wines with uh, fairly rich fruit, but at the same time, good acidity. 
As far as grape varieties go, uh, Washington is still kind of sorting out what their standard needs to be. There are a lot of Bordeaux varieties like Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot, Cabernet Franc, uh, and Malbec grown around in uh, Washington State. Um, and a lot of blended wines made from these. There's also plenty of Syrah. Uh, there's also now uh, a fair bit of Viognier uh, for white wines, which can be very good. Uh, but uh, in general, they're still sort of planting things, trying to figure out what works best in this kind of unusual di uh, climate dynamic. Okay, so what did you learn about America today? American wines are classified through American Viticultural Areas, or AVAs. The three most important wine-growing states are California, Oregon, Washington. Three beautiful states. Great tourism. If you haven't been, you should really go. I have a, a timeshare. You can't borrow it though. I, it's all booked. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have even said it. It's all booked. Hey, next year, next year, please feel free to give me a call. I'll be, be more than happy.